Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good evening. Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is 10.38 p.m. West Coast time here. Saturday, July 26, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows a 3.8 earthquake here. See where that's hiding. Looks like over across the area of Greece. All right, uh, also some movement stirring up here in the Canada. Look at this oddball earthquake up here. Technically not an oddball earthquake because they do get earthquakes up there in Canada around the Alberta area. This is associated with oil and gas wells out there in this area of Canada. Similar to what we see down in Texas and, and the, that area here in the States, right? Except for they name these different differently. They, uh, they call them industry related events. This was a 4.1 earlier uh, at 0313. So that's actually uh, fairly recent here. I believe that was uh, just a couple hours ago. Either way, um, an earthquake out there in the oil fields, they have yet to name it um, into this, a description, which is suspected industry related event. And that's just the oil fields out there. A lot of oil fields uh, in this area of Alberta. And um, that's, yeah. USGS not showing that, but uh, is coming in there from the EMSC and also the Canada site. So a little bit of movement uh, happening up there in Alberta. Uh, for Northern California here, we got one earthquake showing up here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone again. At 1.6, 12 miles deep here into the area. I was going to show you guys here on the map because I believe I've seen it show up there, but... Uh, uh, looks like they're offline here for a few seconds. Either way, activity stirring up down here into the southern end. Got four earthquakes here. Um, mixed bag of some deeper and some shallow adjustment going on. Still watching this area closely. We we do occasionally see these partial ruptures of the Cascadia subduction zone down south, resulting you know up into a, to about an 8.3, 8.4 magnitude earthquake. And they do happen in between the main events. In our last event, main event, the full rupture was 325 years ago. So we could be getting close here. Got to watch out pretty closely. Uh, by the way, trimmer activity here. Let's see what we got for Cascadia trimmer. We do have some down south here at the extreme southern end. That is why we're seeing elevated earthquake activity in this region here. Off upstream there from the deeper areas of the Cascadia. This is trimmer that's being recorded between uh, the two plates here as, as uh, they slowly slip past each other. They, they also call them slow slip events. Bunch up north here uh, around Olympia as well. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening up there for now, but uh, sure noticeable down here upstream from the trimmer. So that's why we got elevated strain occurring there for now. Um, also this 2.5 out there on the strike slip boundary could be um, adding to the trimmer activity here because most of the time we'll get general stress pointing down in this fashion here towards the southern end uh, with any earthquake activity that occurs on this fault boundary but uh, either way I guess we, we'll watch it I mean no telling when the big one's going to happen just got to be prepared uh, San Francisco Bay Area one earthquake on the Hayward Fault that's another fault system that's technically overdue runs right through the very populated area of the East Bay that's uh, four miles deep there for a 2.4 I believe that's the second one out here maybe the second or third out here on the Hayward fault here recently uh, eventually that's gonna pop uh, one earthquake off the San Andreas fault here outside of the San Francisco Zoo a little 1.6 um, the rest of the plate boundary here, the San Andreas Fault, one earthquake, a little point five here in the last hour, it stops right about the Parkfield section, and that's the area that is locked up here. Um, most, most of the time we'll see creeping movement here <laughs> along the creeping section. That's why they call it the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, it's an area of the plate boundary here that uh, really doesn't lock up like areas south and north. They tend to just have periodic earthquake activity there. Uh, and uh, really never locks up into a big earthquake, although it can. But this park build section here uh, normally sees earthquakes in the magnitude 6 range or above every 20 to 22 years, and the last big one was back in 2004. So we are getting awfully close here. We're, we're well within that time period, I'd say. 
A uh, handful of earthquakes there outside of Bakersfield. That uh, is the area that uh, had a 5. Point, I think it was a 5.4 earthquake here a few months back. Seeing some aftershock activity or increasing strain out here in the area. Uh, Southern California, a little spotty. I mean, it's got quite a few dots out there, but really nothing big going on. The San Andreas Fault here continues to sleep. But uh, I, I don't know how much longer it's going to be able to sleep like that because we've had so much movement out here across the majority of the plates here, and specifically the Pacific Plate, that I'm really surprised that this area is holding on. Should be uh, coming up here soon. It's just, it's a matter of, it's facts. It's not wishful thinking. It's not fear mongering. That is just historical data. And the facts tell us right here that a big one uh, is imminent, could be at any time. Texas oil fields, these are just, they're just called earthquakes out here in the States, but they don't, you know, name them in industry related event because, well, I don't know if that would be good for the gas and oil folks there, but uh, in, in, anyway, those are out there in the oil fields, quite a few of them. Uh, one earthquake in Kansas there, a little 2.9 outside of Paradise, Kansas. Never heard of Paradise, Kansas, outside of Hayes, it looks like. A um, little uncertain on to what's out here. Let's take a look here at the satellite view. Looks like a little creek that goes through there, but I don't see any gas or oil fields. Doesn't mean there's not uh, or hasn't been any there in the past, but a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Nothing big. Occasionally we'll see some earthquakes out around Nebraska and Kansas and Yellowstone pretty quiet for now. Nothing showing up there. Eastern portion of the country quiet. Let's take a look here at the world view. Let's see what's uh, cooking up here. A lot of activity stirring up today and in the last 24 hours in between our middle it's our middle point boundary between the Kuro Kamchatka earthquake there off the Russia coast and that seven pointer that struck over here around Sand Point. A lot of movement happening up here across this area of the Aleutian Trench, but it makes sense to fill in. Uh, you can't, you know, I'd be surprised if that didn't fill in. That's a general plate movement here of the uh, Pacific Plate off to the northwest. So when earthquake activity occurs on here, it's expected to strain areas here further to the northwest. It just happened to jump over this area and then hit the uh, Russia area with that seven pointer here recently, but it's starting to fill in. Uh, the only thing is that should amplify conditions out here across the uh, Filipino plate and Japan area. A lot of movement happening up north and south down here recently, so got to watch that. Uh, as far as Japan goes, fairly quiet for the most part there on the USGS map. Um, one 3.3 there on the east coast of Japan. Continue to watch that, though. Look at that deep earthquake here. W raised well off the globe. That is a, let's see what we got down here. Looks like it's going to be this 5.1 here into the Banda Sea area. 385 miles deep. Remember last time this large deep earthquake struck this area? Well, we had some elevated movement here, including a six-pointer, I believe. This quake right here. Maybe even a couple of them. 6.3 there a number of days ago. Uh, that was following some deeper activity in the region. So deeper quakes always, oh, tend to always trigger large pressure gradients out here resulting in elevated earthquake activity so watch this region closely i know it's always seen earthquake activity but uh, definitely some deeper movement here recently uh, there's a earthquake activity down south here it's been quite active there as well outside of the macquarie island region uh, leaving New Zealand up here in the middle point boundary. They sit right on the plate boundary here. The Alpine Fault, holding, holding steady, has not produced any big earthquake activity here in uh, quite a few hundreds of years. Uh, but that's building up some steam for sure. Some movement there along the uh, Kermadec Trench shallow at five, with a 5.0 there earlier this evening. So watch the... Uh, Watch this area. There's two different boundaries here that I like to watch. The Hikurangi Subduction Zone and the Alpine Fault. Major big-time quake producers. There's, a, there's the uh, Hikurangi. The Alpine Fault extends down south here across South Island, the west side here. And the middle point here is one of the more um, concerning sites as we're seeing a lot of stress and strain built up along that area recently. Uh, let's see what else we have out here, folks. Uh, Hawaii pretty quiet out there in the middle of the Pacific for now. 
fairly quiet across this area. I mean, there's some movement, but uh, looks hit and miss. Not a whole lot going on there through the Atlantic. And uh, Peru Chile Trench, typical movement, including the 4.9 down there. Middle America Trench as well. Just typical earthquake activity in those zones. Nothing of abnormal movement for now, but we'll watch this and see how it plays out here. This has been pretty quiet around the Japan area in the last few days. That's why I think here that it's a uh, lot of movement south, a lot of movement north. And again, the general plate stress here moves off to the west-northwest here. So that has to be adding further increasing strain across this region. So just watch that uh, around areas of the Filipino plate. Space weather activity. If there is any, well, we're back down into the boring class. Look at that, B7.6. Hello, not a whole lot going on here. Someone mentioned, and I've seen this on the social media page, you know, about uh, maybe them not acknowledging all the space weather. And I don't know who they are, maybe, you know, space weather folks, I guess, but the data doesn't lie. The data is consistent. It comes in as raw data. And if there was some big stuff going on, we would see it. There's numerous sunspot, sunspots out here. But as I always say, we could have a hundred of these like that look like this, right? Hundreds of these little sunspots. But if there's not magnetic complexity in the core, well, you're left with the B flare category and maybe an occasional C. Yeah, just because it's peppered with a lot of sunspots does not mean anything. You have to have that special magnetic complexity there that harbors the potential for stronger flaring. And right now, there's not a whole lot out here. Everything's separating. Look at this sunspot just completely separating as many of these have done. And they continue to decay and just fade off into the sun, so to speak. Not a whole lot further behind that on the eastern limb either. Um, let's see what we got here for the far side of the sun. Uh, this is today's imagery. Look at that massive area back over here, though. That thing's grown. That, um, I don't remember which sunspot that was, but it looks like it took off like crazy. There's a huge coverage area. Uh, quite impressive out there. That's the far side of the sun. This is the earth-facing side. Here in a number of days, that will come around here. The eastern limb will get a glimpse of it, but uh, that is one of the more larger areas of sunspot coverage that I've seen but you know the thing is is it complex is it blasting off you know huge solar flares uh, even if it was you know we it wouldn't be earth directed and we would see something showing up here uh, but I'm just even though this is you know for data on the on the earth facing side we would still see hints of something large going on on the far side I just don't see it but it'll be interesting to watch that huge region coming around here in a number of days um, Aurora forecast, as I called, it's not going to really result into much, folks. I know they have this up here for tonight, a G1 class storm, but that's maybe like a 1% chance that's going to happen. Nothing's coming in. Very quiet conditions there for the Auroras for now. Uh, storm Prediction Center, not a whole lot going on uh, as far as anything major goes. There's a little 2% chance for some tornadoes, some wind, and it looks like some hail threats out there this evening. So a little bit of noise being uh, made out there across the areas of the Dakotas there. Show you guys here on the weather radar map. One of my favorite apps to use here. Uh, yeah, it looks like that will continue through the evening. Quite a bit of storms out there. Look at all that lightning. Wow, man, that is an enormous amount of lightning. I could not even imagine a storm that big. Anyway, watch for that. Some large hail tonight. I uh, forgot to check here on the Mount Rainier station. I do always want to cover that. Let's see what's going on there for earthquake activity. Um, we got uh, 1,042. Not a whole lot here in the last day or so. Let me bring up the USGS map here again to show you guys. I, I think, not 100% certain, but I think they turned off some of the reporting here for the specific area of the summit uh, they're showing the last earthquake being recorded at two o'clock this morning here but we all know that's not the truth because if you look over here on the seismograph station here the recorded one well there was just one in the last few minutes and we've been watching the size of these and comparing them to 
you know the the data that they're putting out as far as the magnitude and that's that is probably a, a probably a one magnitude one and they have not reported any of these uh, even some of these smaller spikes here throughout the early evening and afternoon there's been a number of these but uh, for whatever reason they have come to a halt in in reporting these earthquakes that one's a little bit larger too so hopefully it's just a weekend thing um, because the swarm is still ongoing up there across Mount Rainier all right uh, what else we got here <clears throat> take a look here at the long-term models I know it's cooking out there across the east nice and below average here for the west coast I would love for it to stay that way all summer but uh, we all know that's not gonna happen uh, high pressure well looks like it builds in there as we head into the first second week of August but uh, I think we'll finish off July here a little bit below average for California so that's okay with me things are moving around they're shuffling around um, as we get closer to the fall time here we'll start noticing a a wide range of cooler patterns and dominant high pressure areas I just hope that's not going to be out here across the west coast I'm, I'm done with summer L last couple days here have been in the low 80s and that is well below average for us this time last year I think we we're at 110 or 115 not even joking I don't live in Death Valley I live here in the Sacramento Valley outside of Chico it's just been a very pleasant uh, last week or so here of summer some thunderstorms up there let's check out the fire map real quick uh, I have a feeling that may be elevated hopefully not but uh, yeah there is a few more new fires out here on the map the lunch fire mammoth fire that looks like it's turning out to be kind of a big one there 40 percent containment though the tank fire Uh, I guess the main one out there is going to be the Butler fire. They're getting a handle on it, though. A couple fires up in Oregon. Uh, looks like a new one down here, Boneyard fire. That one's burning like crazy. That's got a whole bunch of elevated hot spots there on the satellite signature. That's these orange shaded areas. That's not good. Burning pretty hot. Uh, it is at 20% containment. We got any, any uh, cameras facing that way? Yes, we do see what that looks like well that one's not gonna help looks like there's spider webs or something all over it yeah hard to tell but like I say the satellite imagery there is definitely picking up some hot spots out there so hopefully they get a handle on that that's a boneyard fire 202 acres burning out there that's uh and the foothills, I guess they call these the foothills here, off of 49. All right, folks, uh, let's see here. Seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now. Not a whole lot showing up on them, but, uh, you know, things can change here in the blink of an eye. I do think we need to watch areas up north, um, west here across the Pacific Plate. New Zealand's been... It's been jumping over New Zealand as far as larger movement goes. I know recently we had a five-pointer here. That's a five-pointer, six miles deep, more than likely associated here with uh, potentially the strain out here of the Hikurangi subduction zone, the northern end. I know there's been a lot of deeper activity here recently, so that's always some concern. Eventually, this has to move, right? You can't just have tons of earthquake activity and expect this thing to uh, stay like that forever. So this, this little portion will move here eventually. All right. I'm out of here. Have yourself a wonderful evening. And just stay on guard. Be prepared. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later tomorrow sometime. When I was looking at this little earthquake outside of Mount Hood. Nothing big. Little point seven. They're reporting that. But what about the earthquakes there at Mount Rainier? It seems like it's still happening, but not uh, reporting anything. A little interesting there. I'm guessing more than likely they'll probably fill in uh, on Monday once they get a little bit more personnel there and maybe looking over the data. All right. Take care, folks. We'll see you guys out here in the morning. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the Saturday night.